I want to give you five words of grace for you to use. Every time there's a battle, it's a difficulty, say this under your breath. Look at the problem and say this under your breath. Okay? Before I give it to you, let me show you a story, a very famous story that happened in Israel. You still can go to that place, that valley there, and still imagine because the valley is almost unchanged. All right? The, the topography and all that. 1 Samuel 17. When the Philistines looked about and saw David, the Goliath has been standing there challenging the people of Israel to challenge, to fight him. For 40 days, he's been standing there. No one dared to fight this 10-footer. Some say about 9 to 11, 12 feet. We're not sure, but he's one of the giants. And he was ugly, he was mean. In those days, all right, they, they, they are very, you know, they, their faces are all like scars and all that. So when he disdained David. When he saw David, he despised David because David was only a youth ruddy and good looking. So the Philistines said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me, come to me, I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, you come to me with visible sword, with a visible spear, and a visible javelin. Today we'll say missile, bombs, rockets, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, invisible God who is eternal, the God of the armies of Israel whom you defied. Next. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I'll strike you and take your head from you. And this day I'll give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air, to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. Next. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with what is visible, with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's and He will give you into our hands. Right now, memorize this, learn to mutter this when you are in, uh, uh, before your difficulty, learn to say this under your breath. The battle is the Lord's. It's not mine. It's not mine. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Uh, Pastor Prince, my teenage girl is mixing around with bad company. You feel it's your battle, it's not your battle. Don't touch it. It's the battle, is the Lord's. Just like the tithe. The tithe is the Lord's. Don't touch it. It belongs to Him. Same way, the battle is not yours to touch. Amen. Your, your, your arm is not too great. Your sight is not that far reaching. Amen. God, no, God is stronger. God is greater. God loves you more than you love yourself. He loves your teenage daughter more than you can love her. God is saying, don't touch the battle. It's mine. The battle is the Lord. But Pastor Prince, uh, David still went to meet the, yeah, but how did he go? Dressed in an armor? No, dressed as a shepherd boy. With a sword? No, with a sling. So obviously he believes this battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's. So learn to look at your problems now. And the devil say, what are you going to do about it? Say, the battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. Lord, this is your battle. Lord, this is your battle. Lord, this is your battle. Throughout this year, Lord, this is your battle. Now, sometimes it won't be as quick as David's victory, but the Lord is hearing what you're saying. And the Lord loves it. His arms are bigger than yours. Lord, this is your battle. The battle is the Lord's. Your five words of grace this year. Amen? The doctors gave you a bad diagnosis under your breath. This battle is the Lord's. That's the good fight of faith. You fight by not fighting. You fight by not fighting. That's the greatest fight. It's like the devil wants you to think, there's a place called heal, and you are not healed. There's a place called heal. You see, you must do your best to go there. And you know, and, and he will try to bring in, but you must be obedient enough to reach there. You must be holy enough to reach there. You must be good enough to reach there. And you're never there. Actually, that's not the truth. The truth is, you're already there. You are the heel, and the devil is trying to take your healing. And you're saying, no, this is a lying symptom. No, Lord, this is your battle. I'm already healed. This is your battle, Lord. I'm already healed. This is your battle, Lord. I'm already healed. It's so much more easier to know that you're in a building when you're already in the building. Are you listening? You're already healed, not trying to be healed. The devil is trying to take your healing. It's not like you're trying to take your healing. No. The devil is trying to take your healing. By calling his bluff, you expose him. It's a fight of faith. It might take some time. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. And that's why the Bible is faith food for all of us. Can I have a good amen? Another instance, and you know what happened to the giant? 
He came down, boom! That's it. All right, one stone. One stone because the battle is the Lord's. Who, who do you think made the stone hit the mark? The Lord. And the giant came down. The, the Bible says, David decapitated his head, took his head. And very interesting, the Bible says that he brought the head to Jerusalem. Valley of Eli is miles away from Jerusalem. Why did David bring the head to Jerusalem? Now, there's, a, there's a one rabbinical tradition. There's one tradition that says that the head of Goliath was buried in a place that was called Gal Goliath. And later on, there's a perversion of the name from Gal Goliath, the heel of Goliath became Golgotha, where a greater son of David, Jesus Christ, would conquer a greater Goliath and smash his head at the cross when he bore all our sins and shout, it is finished. Amen. Amen. All right, let's fast forward. David became a king and uh, according to his seed, down to the years, there was another king called Jehoshaphat. And King Jehoshaphat was surrounded, don't, don't show them just yet, he was surrounded by the enemies, about uh, four or five enemies, and they were surrounding him. The Bible says a great multitude came against him. And I love his prayer. You got time? Read his prayer. All right, it's found in 1 Chronicles 20 for a 2020 vision. So you look at, he says this, he looked to God and he says, God, I love this prayer. We have no might, no power against this great multitude but our eyes are upon you. I love it. It's like saying, we have no might. We have nothing, no resources against this disease, against this condition, but our eyes are upon you. I don't know how my daughter can be delivered, how my son can be delivered, but my eyes are on you. And when they said that, the Holy Spirit fell upon one of the sons of Asaph, and he was a prophet, and he said this, Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Yes, listen, this battle is not yours. It is God's. But the enemies are coming against me, Jehoshaphat could have said. But it's not yours, King. It is God's. You don't understand, Pastor Prince. This is coming against my family. But it's not yours. It's God. And everything in your flesh is saying, you are just being irresponsible. You, are, you, are, you, should, you, should, you should worry. How can you not worry? And in fact, you are doing the greatest thing you can ever do against that situation, against that problem. Even though you are in the midst of a trial. Amen. And someone said, well, Pastor Prince, you know, of course you are so blessed, you don't know what I'm going through. How do you know that I'm not going through a trial right now? How do you know? In fact, I am going through a trial right now. All right? We are all always going, either about to enter a trial, either in the trial or outside the trial. You understand? This side of heaven is part and parcel, but I'm eating and I'm feeding. I'm not complaining. Amen? Yeah. By the way, the word complain in the Bible, all right, is the word loon. <laughs> God hates it when, when His people complain. In Chinese, you have loon. In, Amer in English, also you have loony. Right? And the word loon is complain, but it's also the word to spend a night. In other words, if you complain about your situation, God says one more night. In other words, you stay in that situation one night. It's not from God, but God hates complaining. Look throughout the wilderness experience, those who are complaining, God hates complaining. Amen. You complain, you remain. You praise, you get a raise above your situation. All right? Don't complain and remain. Praise and be raised. Hallelujah. The battle's not yours, y'all. It's God's. So, you know what you say? The greatest thing you can say? Rest. When it happens, say, Lord, it's not mine. I can't overcome this addiction. The battle is yours. And this is where a lot of people say, oh, Pastor Prince, you know, uh, you're teaching people, they can do whatever they want. That's what you always say. I don't know who you are. <laughs> but let me tell you this, Mr. Philistine. I have a testimony here of a man who has been smoking for 50 years. Last week, I shared about 
people who are, um, I mean, a guy who was on drug addiction and before that, uh, pornography and all that. Our, test, our ministry has testimonies of people being delivered from drug addiction and also pornography. These are the two areas. So before you cry out to the highest heaven, we need to teach on holiness. Show me your results and I'll show you mine. Okay? So here's a guy who's been smoking for 50 years. I was a heavy smoker who used to smoke a minimum of one packet of cigarettes per day. One day, I made a decision to quit smoking after hearing a sermon. However, my efforts were in vain. I started smoking again after a few days. How many know that by trying, you cannot? The battle is not yours. It is God's. Then, my son gave me Joseph Prince's book, Destined to Reign, which I read in two weeks. I realized that Jesus has redeemed me and this life is all about looking to Him, all about believing and receiving what He has already done for me. I felt a great desire to quit smoking. And this is supernatural. Some people try to stop but still have a desire. He said, I felt a great desire. I reread some chapters from the book again and wrote down my prayer on paper. But this time, listen, this was written before I preached this sermon. But this time, I decided not to fight against my cigarette addiction. The battle is the Lord's. All right, he got a revelation from reading the book not to fight against my cigarette addiction because I knew I could not quit smoking successfully through my own efforts. I just chose to rest in Jesus, receiving His grace and believing that He has set me free from my addiction at the cross. It was not my battle, but His. And He has already won it for me. Okay, what's the result? What's the result? And those of you who are shouting to the high heavens how dangerous grace is and talking about holiness. Amen? This is the result. I just needed to continually realize that I'm forgiven and justified by Jesus' grace, not by my obedience or actions. After struggling to quit smoking for 50 years, miraculously, by simply resting in Jesus' finished work, I have kicked the habit successfully and effortlessly. I have been free of cigarettes. Jesus has done it for me. Hallelujah. Amen. You hold your peace, God won't. He'll fight for you. If you fight, God holds His peace. And everything in you will cry. You gotta do something. Don't do anything. And finally, all those giants they were afraid of. And the walls of Jericho, even the big lofty walls, all fell after six days of silence. Joshua made the people go around the walls in silence. Not a word. Hold your peace, Joshua said. Why? The Lord is fighting for you. On the seventh day, only on the seventh day, he said, shout! And all those giants they were afraid of 38 years ago. Those tall Anakims, big giants, lofty walls, all fell flat with one shout. The Lord will fight for you. I don't care if it's cancer, whatever it is, the Lord will fight for you. Your place is fight not to fight and labour to enter the rest. All right? Let us labour therefore to enter into that rest. Lest you fall into unbelief. Labour to be more restful. Labour to be more restful. And you can't do that. Feeding on newspapers, on the media, on the world's food. Melons, leeks, garlic, onions. No, you feed on olive, vine, the food of God. And when you feed, you possess. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.